many ways, we're in the doldrum of the NFL season, quote unquote. But the reality is, if you're a, a member of the staff, a scouting a department, or the GM, you're grinding right now. You're grinding all the time. Because this game is so nuanced, it's so deep, it's so mercurial as far as things are happening. You're trying to find control over these unknowns that you really are just every single day trying to get better. It sounds like a cliche, but it's not if you want to succeed in this insane, wild game called NFL football. So... I always think there's there's tons of things that go over, and I I, I, you know, I go over to you all offensive line a lot I, because to me it's the foundation. We know that it can brings just great consistency. Offensive line is the most portable uh, unit of of the game that can just find success anywhere. You you got a good offensive line, you know, week in and week out, you just what you you're pretty much getting what you're gonna get. Now the passing game depending on the weather, guys get the yips, all kind of inconsistencies can come through the passing game. And even the run game, it, there's a lot of consistency in the run game, but that depends on the defenses you're facing. It depends on how well the blocking is and then the environment too. If you ever try to run in in really wet ground or snow, but the next that right after the offensive line, the real foundation of consistency, and it's it's, they say our championships are won by, is the defense. The defense, it pretty much, it's going to be what it's going to be week in and week out, barring injuries. Weather can affect it a little bit, but a team, a head coach knows, hey, I, if I got these offensive linemen, I know they're going to do this kind of thing, then I got to, you know, worry about all the uh, skill parts around it. But then that defense, I know that it's going to come in here and it's going to do its job for the most part. There's a little, you know, uh, fluctuation between how well it does, but it's it's just much smaller than the offense. The offense is all over the place. Look at the greatest show on uh, turf when it went against the Patriots and uh, the hoodie in his first hoodie experience. And it's over and over again like that. So most teams throughout history of NFL, they have some strengths and some weaknesses. But offensive line and defense are the keys to winning a championship. So, I'm not going to talk about the offensive line because it's an unknown. Uh, I, I, you know, some people want to talk about Tua. He's going to win it for us. He's not. He, no, he's not. He's a big piece. He's definitely a big piece. But you could see, by the way, Chris Greer has built this team, the amount of assets and focus on the defense. This is a defensive-based team. Flores... Made it a defensive base team. It's still a defensive base team, no matter what. Even McDaniel comes in here because the talent, yeah, you got high points in the receiving group, and you know, you got some high points here and there on the offensive line. And you know, whatever you think about Tua, we've invested big on Tua. And you know, there's a little bit here on the running back. But man, oh man, is that defense jack stacked and loaded especially when you add Fangio. And so I want to go over, because I I think this, obviously, the offensive line is going to play a big role. Two is going to play a big role. He's got to stay healthy. He's got to perform well. We got to get some run game, because the run game over the course of a game and the season gives the defense fresh legs. But this defense is going to be the foundation, the base and it's going to be what carries us because if this defense is as good as it could seem to be, and I'm going to go over some stuff, then I'll take a look at the or the whole squad and show you the depth. It's, it's, when you start looking at it, you're like, whoa, this could be something special. And so this defense plays to even like 80, 85% of what it appears it could be. It could be one of those defenses that just allows you to win each and every week. Nothing's guaranteed, but when you look at this defense and you really take a look at what they did last year and the defensive floor is kind of set in place and now it's been enhanced and it magnified, this could be a championship 
defense could be. It was pretty close last year. If you just, if you realize how much beatings this secondary took and realize how much has been put into place to make this secondary and pass defense better, and of course, Ed Fangio, this could be the defense level that Flores was trying to get to with a high potency attack on the offensive passing game. And that could create something special. So, uh, Going to do the Wednesday live thing, uh, the whole schedule, and digging deep. Uh, Wednesday at uh, 8.30 Eastern time. I uh, hope you guys can show up there, get my game up a little better, I hope. Uh, so anyway, thanks for stopping by, talking fins with me. I appreciate all your comments. I love your comments. Some great people out there, man. I really appreciate you guys. You make this job. It is very nerve-wracking for me, very fun. So I want to give you a shout-out. Shout-out to Ace Bread, my sponsor. Because without the two of you, this show ain't going down. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. We have off, we have the defensive line, we have linebacking group. You know, we'll get into it. And then you have a secondary. You have run defense. You have pass defense. You have pass rush. And then, really the most important, I would say the most important, but hugely underestimated, is depth. And this team has it all. Now, last year, offensive yards per game uh, was 19th, which is not great. It's just slightly below average. Uh, offensive points per game, uh, 24th, which is below average. Offensive run defense, 4th, which is top 5 and stellar. And that was really, when you go back and look at the, the, uh, the season last year, when you're a coach and you're a team, you want something you can depend on. The more things that you have each and every week as far as a phase of the game that's dependable, the easier it is to handle these situations that come in and all the craziness that comes with it. And that run defense was the most consistent and potent thing we had, and we're going to have that in spades, maybe even a little better than last year, plus all the other stuff that we're going to get. Now, offensive uh, pass defense, 28, that was Gabage. You know, obviously, Jones was out. Needham went down. Kohu was a rookie. Howard was injured. Uh, Jones went down. You know, we were calling people up, you know, on the side of the street. You want to play defense back? But that's obviously been enhanced. So, uh, pressures, most pressures, sixth. Most uh, sacks, eighth. So we got the sacks. We got the pressures, although that's going to change a little bit because we're not going to be as much of a pressure defense. But the dropping of those pressures a little bit is going to enhance the coverage because you see zone coverage, mix match, zone coverage. It's going to be a lot different. And I still believe with the talent we have in those zones and the confusions because we would our secondary was so bad, we were like, please get a sack, please get a sack. Now... This coverage should create coverage sacks. And with guys like Chubb, guys like uh, 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 Phillips, and all the rest that are coming in there inside to make some noise, we have a rotation. You're going to get roughly probably the same thing as far as pressures, maybe a little bit less. But boy, oh boy, that pass defense is going to step up. 28th. And points per game, 24th. And a lot of that came from those third down defenses and the pass. Just think, we got 9 and 8, went to the postseason, and almost like this beat the Bills, almost, with this kind of pass defense, this, this flawed defense, really just making it happen on pressure and stopping the run. Now, adding all these other pieces that you're going to see here in this graphic, and, yeah, I'm using PFF just because it's expedient. But look what you got here. R People say Ramsey's is toast. He's no good. Guys, that's not true. I'm going to go I'm gonna go back and do a little study and show you. He gets burned sometimes on man coverage, but he was left naked with one of the worst pass rushes 
with the Rams last year. And if you got no pass rush and you're playing man, I don't care who you are unless you're Dion. And even Dion would struggle with the kind of pass rush they had last year. But Howard, you can see he gets a bad grade. Uh, you can see the nickel atop base. I'm going to start with the pass defense first, obviously, because that's the that's the point of growth that we're really going to need to focus on. But he might be healthy, and I think a lot more zones and less man is going to allow him to kind of stay healthy. And then you got Kohu. Kohu might play boundary. Ramsey's can co- Ramsey can come inside. Not Ramsey's. Ramsey. He's not the guy from uh, doing battle with Moses. Uh, so Ramsey, he could play slot. He could play wide. And that's going to create some extra work for these receivers and these OCs. So that's a real nice rotation. Because worst case scenario, if Howard goes down and it's Kohu and Ramsey, that's still a pretty good situation considering you got Needham, you got uh, behind that Cam Smith, who you could expect a lot from this guy in the second round. And you're going to have uh, more zone coverage. You got Long, who's a pretty decent cover guy. Uh, you got Elliott, you brought in. You got depth. You got Brandon Jones, who's more of a run stopper, but he's a guy who could fit in there. And then uh, McKinley, who was not bad last year, the third. And then you got Holland on the top. So. Howard doesn't seem, he doesn't go down, down, down. But if he gets nicked and he's not as good as you want him to be, you can bring him in, let him rest, and bring him back in. There's so much depth here that it, you know, we're not, it would take a real mass unit to destroy this thing. And clearly, with the ability to not have to be the most athletic defense on the field, when you play man, you got to be the most athletic defense. This is going to be a, 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 a it's going to take athleticism, obviously, but it's going to be, you allow them to use the brain, allow to test the brain of the quarterback more than just who's blitzing me, who's in coverage, where they're going. And Ramsey and Howard are savvy, savvy, super savvy vets. Uh, Needham's been around for a minute. Kohu's in the second year, and this is going to be really good. Holland's going into his third year. And so you got a lot of vets that can take advantage of this. Brandon Jones has been around for a long time. Elliott's a vet. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity. And then you got that front, that pressure front with Baker, who I expect to see more blitzes. He wasn't bad at coverage. Long could be pretty good in coverage. Chubb, Seela, Wilkins, Phillips, that's the top nickel down. You bring it down. Now you see, look, you got Emmanuel Agba, who's healthy. Remember how he was the star of our defense and he was out last year. Then they brought Malik Reed in there for a little extra pass rush. Andrew Van Ginkle for a pack of bubble gum. He's returned. So you got this nice rotation. And then even at the linebacker situation, you got your uh, third round pick in Tindale. Uh, Tindal. Still trying to work on that one. Tindale. Tindal. Tindal. Tin somebody. Tin Tin. Uh, who, who's supposed to be somebody, he should be showing up this year. And then you got Duke Riley, who's Mr. You know, reserve guy. So you got some little bit of depth there. And so you're going to be able to stop the run with all these bodies, these rotation of bodies. You're going to be able to get there after the quarterback. And then you're going to be able to have plenty of bodies to cover in pass coverage. And the thing is, this top four defense is probably going to be a top four defense again, unless some stuff happens. I'm going to show some of the chinks in this armor. But if this secondary can be in off ske- face off schedule offenses with Fangio thinking ahead and being ahead better than these OCs and then creating deliberation by disguising coverages in third and long and second off schedule longs, this could be a very opportunistic defense, a defense that gives a, a, a potent offense the ball maybe an extra two or three times a game. And you go back and look, a couple scores here or there would have changed a lot for us last year. So, I mean, how, how much more could you get on this defense besides putting Ray Lewis at middle linebacker? You know what I mean? Like You've got top all-time cornerbacks, you know, you got a stud, uh, uh, safe, free safety, Holland. You've got long, you know, he's got the injury a little bit issue, but still 
excellent linebacker. And then you get all this talent inside on the defensive line. Sealer, Chubb. Now, Chubb can kind of play that DN in the four look, the four guy look. He could play the outside linebacker, but his coverage isn't so hot. Van Ginkle actually is a good cover guy compared to Chubb. But you could rope all these guys in with Sealer and Davis and Wilkins and Agba. It's unbelievable. Now, now there are some chinks if injuries happen. But there is ways to get through it on some of them. Now, Davis, he struggled for two seasons with a bad knee. 2020, this guy was looking like something from a freak show. But his knee keeps getting hit. It keeps getting whacked. And he's just not the same guy. He's half the man he was in 2020. If he comes back to look like he was in 2020, he doesn't get that knee injured. And that's a, that's that's like a surprise wild card. You got to that would be tremendous. It would be mind blowing, really. But if not, and he's a body in there, at least you got Wilkins to slide inside, and then Agba and that three look can come in and play inside. Now, Agba's a little bit small. But on the nickel looks, on the pass downs, he can kind of come inside still and work along with Sealer or, or play that outside edge DN look where you get Chubb and, and, and Sealer and Wilkins and Agba and then Phillips could play on outside doing that blitz. But if Wilkins gets hurt, that's a little bit of a nervous moment for us because he's the heart of this defense. If this run defense kind of loses his gusto, and Wilkins is the guy that does it all, then that's a little bit of concern. But he has been extraordinarily healthy. Missed a couple games, I think, here and there. A little few dings. But overall, it would be a a very big shock if he gets injured. Anything can happen. But he's a one piece on that front that would really, really concern me. I would be concerned with Phillips, too. But then you got to kind of chub to offset that. You know? So... But then that second level, uh, the linebacking group, Long does, he's the one that concerns me the most. Now, it wouldn't cripple this defense as it does, as it would with Wilkins. I mean, not cripple, but it would be a big hit. It would be, whoa, you'd see a difference. Now, Long, he's going to bring a lot in that linebacking spot that we have not seen in a long time. He does have an injury history. But he misses a couple of games, but he usually finishes the season. He's kind of like, my man, Tehran. He takes a couple of nicks, but he's in there and stuff like that. But if he goes down, uh, it would, you would have to hope Tin, Tindale, Tindal, Tintin, is going to do what he was called to do. But we can't bank on that. So that's my biggest concern is if Long went down for a long time, you don't have a Landon Roberts, that leader, to call things and to be the physical force inside Long is extremely physical, and he brings a lot to this defense. So that's my one little concern. Now, at the top, Holland is a big, big deal. If he goes down, there's nobody in his vicinity. Cam Smith, I'm not going to even say that yet. He's got to prove this. Holland is a stud. And if he goes down, but he, he hasn't been injured, it's, it, you know, he's proven to be a very healthy guy, super smart dude, hard worker, I think it would take a lot for this guy to go down. Anything can happen, as I said. But he's a guy, along with Wilkins, that concerns me the most to go down. Because you would see that it would change things a lot. Now, I would like Elliott and maybe Cam Smith growing into the role, maybe. we got to see. Uh, Mc, uh, McKinley, uh, he's pretty – I like what he does in a coverage uh, department. But without Holland, he's going to – I think he's going to have a special year especially being able to use his intelligence to orchestrate that secondary, to bait some quarterbacks a la Reed from the Ravens from many years ago. So the real two big, big hits would be Holland and it would be Wilkins. Ramsey goes down. It would concern me. Uh, same with Howard. But it is only got one of them, and he's still got uh, Kohu, who I like a lot, and need him coming in the nickel. And still got Cam Smith who can come in and play some. Um, it's to me, it's not as big a deal. Long though, he's the guy that's most likely to go down, and that would be a little detriment for us because Fangio really likes his linebackers, and this is that's a big piece for him. 
But I still think we can move past and still be an excellent defense without Long. But I think he's going to bring some excellent – I mean, he, I think he's going to shock a lot of Dolphins fans at what he's going to do. And I don't think you've seen that kind of linebacker play in a while here. Uh, but Holland and Wilkins have to stay healthy. They're going to alter things a lot. If not, if they're not in, there's really nobody to replace them in their roles. Uh, but that's it. Other than that, this defense – I think is certainly going to be a top 10 defense. I, there's no room. How could it not be? How could it not be? And if you get that consistency, and especially if this defense creeps into that top seven, top six, or even higher level, with the pop offense, the flash offense you got, with uh, you know all the guys we know of making those quick scores, big plays, nine and eight, with what we saw in past defense last year, what could you do with a top 10, top 7, or better defense? The improvements that have got to be expected, even if this offensive line is nicked up, except for my man Tehran, then all bets are off. My man Tehran, Connor, and Hunt are in there, and you're just going like this to the other two positions, and you got that kind of defense, I like our odds. Uh, it's still a long way to go from here, from, from here to there. But, man, put your hopes on this defense because if it's as good as expected, we're going to have consistency throughout. And it could be the facet that we've been hoping for to get us to where we got to go. Anyway, just take a little time, look over the roster, and consider it how good this defense is. It is stacked. So, uh, I'm going to get to some, uh, I got some other stuff coming up. I'm not going to say what it is until it comes out. Uh, so, anyway, thanks for stopping by. It's going to be a fun, fun season. Let's see what happens. This is the big year, guys. Curtis saying thanks for stopping by. Catch you next time. Go Fins. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.